In today's video, I'll be telling you about my top 10 favorite places to travel. If you're looking for inspiration on which countries and which cities you should go next, I hope this video can be very, very helpful. With that, who am I? I am Mario and I have been to over 130 different countries, including 100 countries before I turned 30 years old. I currently live in Denmark, where I work for Maersk as a senior category manager doing big money negotiations. I also have two side careers. I write online and also prepare videos such as this. And also, as a second thing, travel the world. I have been on the, over the last 10 years, run the world a few times over, and I hope to explore a bit more of that side on this video. Before we start, two notes. The first one is that this is not a favorite country list. So I'll be talking about the specific countries sometimes, but in many other times, I'll just be bundling them. I'll be talking about, for instance, one or two different countries and different cities as just one place because that's the way I travel to them or that's the way I think it will be easier to explain. The second thing is that I love history and I love animals. You need to see this list through that lens. What I would prefer to do is to be hanging out with gorillas in the wild or visiting ancient ruins while other people might rather be in a skyscraper or enjoying the neon lights of modern cities. That's not my stuff. I, again, I like ancient history and I like animals. Number 10 is Buenos Aires to Cusco. I did a month long trip from my hometown of Buenos Aires to Cusco in Peru and it was incredible. Passing through the Argentinian north, then to Bolivia and Peru, this trip has a bit of all. In Bolivia, you have the most incredible mix of landscapes, from the famous salt flats in Uyuni, which are one of a kind, absolutely crazy place, to a route that takes you through the desert to a host of oasis types lakes that goes from blue to red to green in color, and which again in the middle of the desert are full of flamingos. It's just spectacular. In Peru, you have the big boy, Machu Picchu, which is another one of a kind place. The trek from Cusco to Machu Picchu is legendary, I'm famous for that. And once you get there, the view is nothing less than epic. It's one of those places that is just unique, one of a kind. And that's just scratching the surface of what this trip can offer. So in Bolivia, you can also go to the deep jungle, to the borders of the Amazon, after all, and see river dolphins and other really insanely cute animals as well. Plus, then also on the other side of Bolivia, go to Potosí, a city that is 4,000 meters high up in the mountains and where the Spanish had their biggest and most badass silver mine so in the new world. And you can go into that mine as well. And back when I went, you could even get in, buy dynamite and explode the dynamite outside of the mine and in a more safe environment, but still nothing less than crazy. Number nine is Ethiopia. I think Ethiopia is incredible. It's likely the most underrated and less touristic destination from this whole list. And the place is special. There are rock carved churches, ancient hilltop monasteries, giant castles, and much, much more. The people are also unique, with their own old and distinct brand of Christianity. Again, very, very interesting. If I could describe the place in a few words, I would say, and I guess, it's like what, for example, going to India could have looked like going like 50 years ago or so. It's a fascinating place. There's a lot to highlight, but if I would like to pick out just one thing, and this is for all of you Indiana Jones fans out there, in Ethiopia, so the local claims and really believe, you have the real historical Ark of the Covenant. So yeah, that Ark. The Ark is said to be in a small chapel called St. Mary of Zion in Aksum in the north. And when I was growing up, I was obsessed with the Ark. And it was incredible for me to get to that little chapel at the end of my Ethiopian trip. Again, I mean, I told you guys I like history. As a side note, there's only one person that can see the Ark. He's called the Guardian of the Ark, and nobody but him can enter the chapel or even come close to the Ark. The guardian is chosen by the priest and said serves his role for life, never leaving the chapel grounds, spending his days and years praying before the ark and also offering the incense and so on. Very, very interesting place. Number eight are the cities of the ancient Silk Road. Central Asia, which is now a collection of stands, used to be incredibly wealthy per its role as a trading hub between East and West. You can see that wealth now in the spectacular tree of Samarkand, Bukhara and Kiva in Uzbekistan. This is a type of monumental architecture that otherwise you would only see perhaps maybe in Iran or so I hear in Afghanistan. It's very, very interesting. Take the region's most famous city, Samarkand. Samarkand used to be the capital of the great conqueror Tamerlane, or Amir Timur as the local people call him. And Tamerlane was the last of a long tradition of steppe nomadic horse archer empires. So the Scythians, the Huns, the Avars, the Mongols and so on. And all the wealth he brought from his conquests is, is what is now Uzbekistan. And it's clear for everyone to see. 
it's hard for you when you're there not to wow yourself as a sight, which at least when I went had very few tourists. Beyond Uzbekistan, you can visit Turkmenistan and in Turkmenistan the ruins of Merv, another great ancient city totally destroyed by the Mongols. If you ever heard the podcast Hardcore History, where the Mongols just wipe out everyone and dogs and cats and so on, that's referring to Merv. There's a lot more to say on Turkmenistan and there's a reason why it's called the North Korea of Central Asia, but again, not the focus of this video. Across the border from Turkmenistan is Tajikistan, and you can see in Tajikistan the most remote city Alexander the Great ever founded, called Alexandria Shkata, or translated Alexandria as the furthest. It's now called Gujand, and being there also just gave me the chills. I fantasized on this northernmost outpost of the Hellenic Empire when I was growing up. I mean, like I told you, I'm a big nerd. And to be there in person and see the, like, markers of so on it's, it's absolutely incredible and it's very hard to describe the feeling even if you're not a history type there's still a lot to see from the spectacular mountains in both Tajikistan and Kyrgyzstan to see and experiencing the nomadic lifestyle so for instance seeing the animal herds sleeping in yurts so it's these nomadic tents that they have over there and if you're lucky even see an eagle hunter or someone using those crazy composite recurved bows they use in that part of the world super interesting Number seven is the Eastern Mediterranean, historical Greece and the Holy Land. I can count on one hand places that gave me the chills for just being in there, and Jerusalem and Constantinople are definitely at the top of that list. Even if you're not religious, there's so much holiness in Jerusalem, so much history, that it's impossible not to just wow at the sight. Jerusalem is one of the oldest cities in the world, so it's holy to Christians, to Jews and Muslims alike, and has a dramatic history, and sites to show that dramaticness as well all the way from antiquity to the Middle Ages and to the Crusades and into modern times. Specifically to me, sitting down for a mass at the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, which is the most holy site in the whole of Christendom, above what is believed to be Christ's own tomb, was like an incredibly magical experience. Uh, it was amazing. Then you have Constantinople, the imperial capital of Rome for over a thousand years. Now called Istanbul in present-day Turkey, Constantinople is to me, after Rome, the most interesting city in the world. When Rome in the, wealth in the West fell, Constantinople and its incredible Theodosian walls, which are a humongous set of walls that you can still see, stood as the impenetrable fortress of Christendom and Roman culture against first the Jacobite tribes, then the Huns, the Arabs, until all the way to the Fourth Crusade when Constantinople fell. There's so much to see that I can't just do it justice in this quick video. I must though highlight the Hagia Sophia, the city's incredible massive cathedral built over 1,500 years ago and one of the marvels of medieval and early, late antiquity architecture. Also, kudos to the Turkish hospitality. I really can't remember other big cities where people have been as friendly to me as in Istanbul. Has been a while since I've been there, but again, incredible friendliness. I'm still surprised by it, even at this moment. As a last footnote, the Mediterranean was the center of gravity in the West for millennia. And if you like history like me, there's a lot more to see beyond these two cities. So the other places in the Holy Land, such as Bethlehem or Galilee, then Athens in Greece, Tyre and Byblos in Lebanon, and more. It's such an amazing place full of history and very, very interesting. Number six are Paris and London, the imperial cities. And again, I'm bundling them because otherwise, if I would have them both independently, they would both be in the top 10. And that would make it a bit of a boring video. So now combining them both as number six. So Paris, there's no other city more beautiful than Paris. Not to me at least. And I'll keep my description short. I have been around the world multiple times over, but I have never seen another place with such a beautiful architecture all over. And add to that the incredible amount of landmarks, such as the Notre Dame, the Arc de Triomphe, the Eiffel Tower, and so on. And it's just a beautiful, beautiful place. And it all fits perfectly. It's just one of those things that you just need to see it and imagine it. Everything fits perfectly. Plus, it's a very romantic place. Across of the tunnel is London. And I'll give my, is also my description concise. London is incredible. Like Paris, it's architecturally beautiful. And you can see all that wealth from Britain's global empire went into the city's buildings, the parks, the palaces, the statues, and so on. It was no doubts when I traveled around Europe my first time the favorite city for me. The hype, it's real. And then in London, there's the museum. For nerds like me, there's no other place in the world as the British Museum. I would spend a whole year in there and I'm no kidding. Especially the collection of ancient Near East stuff, it's unique as nothing else in the world. 
And after what ISIS did in Syria and Iraq, I'm just so glad that archaeologists could just preserve so much of that legacy into this museum. As a last side note, I was supposed to live in London for six months in 2020, but I mean, of course, we all know how 2020 went, so haha. But I hope I can do get the chance to do that in the future. And if I do live in London, I would imagine moving London a few steps on this list as well, most likely. Number five are Miami, Florida, and the Caribbean. So this one will come out as an odd inclusion, but as they say, no, I put my money where my mouth is. And I have visited Miami and Florida a minimum a dozen times, and if the pandemic allows, it would be a trip I would do every single year. Overall, I have used Miami and its place as a hub to the Caribbean as my go-to location for a wintertime relaxed. You need to zoom out after all, and together with my wife, we have been happily taking cruises and excursions through Florida and the Caribbean for years. It has been our off-work, off-life, chill place to go and travel since then. Miami, Florida and the Caribbean also have great weather, great beaches, sea animals, good food, good shopping, and the whole place is just easy. Thanks to cruises, I have now pretty much visited every single big Caribbean island, and I especially like the Southern Caribbean, where there is a mix of mountains as in San Lucia, amazing beaches as in Aruba, plus sea life, and a very fun culture. As I mentioned, if I could, I would go to the Caribbean every year, and now with a kid, I would also add a Disney's World Stop as well. Number four is Vienna. Vienna is hands down my favorite city in Europe, if not the world. I love it. I lived in Vienna for six months during my studies and I never had as much fun in my life. This may cloud my judgment, but still, when you look into all those best cities to live rankings, Vienna is often number one in the whole world. So what's so cool about Vienna? First, it's just one more of those European imperial cities. The Habsburgs, who ruled Vienna, commanded a huge and wealthy empire, and you can see it. There's a spectacular architecture again, beautiful palaces, and all that all over the place. It's tough to find a nicer walk than through Vienna's ring road and through its city center. Second, what sets Vienna apart is that a lot of that imperial past is open for us normal people. You can go for a ball and dance, tuxedo and all, in the city's fanciest palace. Literally the place that the emperors or so did their own parties. You can go and see the opera in the world famous opera house. Both, by the way, very cheap, again, like normal people cheap. You can go and see for free orchestra concerts all over the city in spring and summer, including at the gardens of one of those another insanely pretty palaces. It's like if you could live and experience part of that imperial past versus just to look at it. It's cool. It's also very, very classy. And there's a lot more. The Christmas markets in winter are worth a visit on their own. The hikes up the mountains close to the city are beautiful and full of local wine taverns and good food. And like Miami, it's a place I just revisit, if not every year, almost so. If you're enjoying this video, make sure you click that subscribe button over here and that you like the video over here as well. That's what the cool people do, but this is also what helps the channel growth. If you click that like button, the video will get promoted to more people. And if more people get to see the video, hopefully I get more subscribers. And if I get more subscribers, I get more motivated to prepare more videos such as this. Number three is Italy and Italy. It would be enough with Rome itself, but then in Italy you had Venice, Florence, the Amalfi Coast, the Vatican, and all the natural beauty of Lake Como and Sicily, and the food, and it's hard to put Italy as number three and not as number one. But let me give you two highlights. The first one is Rome, the eternal city. I love history, and I keep telling you about it, but of all, I'm the most fan of and studied on Roman history. I read most of the classics, and for me it's just wow that you can walk in the same forum that Caesar walked before, where Caesar presented his cases, and considering we're talking about 2,000 years ago, it's just incredible that there's still so much for us to see. Then also in Rome, it's the Vatican, and speaking of chills, what about when you enter St. Peter's Basilica? I can't think of a more beautiful and majestic building in the whole world at all. It's just that type of stuff. It's amazing. Second, second highlight, Venice. And I don't need to tell you about the beauty, the charm, the canals, and so on. What I can tell you, and what many people are not aware of, is that Venice was the richest and most powerful city in the West for centuries. It was a republic in a sea of kingdoms, and a lot of what we see as the wealth of Venice came from that period. And we're lucky that Venice exists. It's just, again, another one of, one of those one-of-a-kind places. There's nothing like it in the whole world. And then beyond these two, there's so much more to see in Italy. A third through Tuscany, so to go to Florence, to Pisa, to Siena, keeps more beauty, more history, and more uniqueness. 
Plus, and just to give a bit of perspective, there's so many places in the, let's say, off the beaten path Italy with a lot of unique, specific things to see that it's just incredible. And just case in point, look it into Ravenna, which was the last capital of the Roman Empire in the West, a place that almost nobody goes, as far as I know, to go and see and visit. And in Ravenna, you have an incredible collection of mosaics that is 1,500 years ago. And the, if you ever opened a book on Byzantine or Eastern Roman history, you at least got to have seen this one. And you can see the real ones in Ravenna, which again is completely off the beaten path and nobody even considers it as part of the places that they should go and visit. But again, case in point that there are a lot of places like this in Italy. And I'm not done visiting Italy, after all. I haven't been south of Naples or to Sicily yet, and it wouldn't surprise me that I move it to number one once I do. Number two, Japan. I am a full Japanophile. I grew up watching anime, playing Nintendo, and hearing J-pop. I even studied the Japanese language for years, and I got pretty good at it. Japan has truly the most distinct culture of all the world's big nations. There's no other place like it. If you can summarize Japan in one word, the word would be intense. There's an obsession with perfectionism that is unlike any other place in the world. I find it truly fascinating. All my life I dreamed of going to Japan, and it was a hard ask when I was growing up in Argentina. Japan is on the completely opposite end of the world, and it used to cost a fortune for us in Argentina to go there. I finally visited after I moved to Europe in 2015, and it delivered up to all my expectations. In my trips, I combined a mix of the old, the modern, and nature. For the old, I visited the traditional looking villages and cities, including Hakone, including the old imperial city of Kyoto, Himeji's incredible castle, and other small locales. For the modern, I checked out the busy Tokyo and Osaka, all with their themed restaurants, anime hotspots, and so on, including a shout out to the Studio Ghibli Museum, which I absolutely loved. Not British Museum loved, but really, really loved. And it's a place I would really like to take my kids more in the future as well. And for nature, you have the spectacular sights of Mount Fuji and, you know, sitting in the hot springs while you're looking at Mount Fuji. I mean, it's one amazing package. And then there are the givens for Japan. People are incredibly polite and friendly. The food is amazing and you'll never in your life see a place as clean. Japan is also, unlike its reputation, not an expensive to trip anymore. It's not so expensive to go there anymore. If Japan is not number one, it's because both times I went to Japan, I went on my own. I prefer to travel alone or with my wife sometimes, but I would expect that Japan is a place you enjoy more when you visit with friends who love the place or love the culture as much as you do. In all cases, I look forward to more visits as well. And finally, number one, Tanzania. And I told you, I love animals. If you can, in my opinion, once in your life, you need to do a real safari. It's an absolute must-see. If you can ever do just one trip in your life, do a proper safari. It can be expensive, but it's worth every dollar. A week-long trip through the Serengeti, Goro Goro Crater, and other smaller parks in northern Tanzania are likely the best place to do it. I have done safaris also both in South Africa and in Botswana, but in neither I felt as immersed. It just wasn't the same experience. What makes it stand apart is that the Serengeti is really big. And in a long trip, you can do a proper round of the place and end up in many corners where it's just you, the animals, and nobody else. If you add that unique and crazy Goro Goro crater, which has, I think, the biggest wildlife density on Earth or something like that, on top of that, you have the trip of a lifetime. Maybe I was lucky. I mean, you can't imagine how many animals I managed to see. So hundreds of elephants to the point that it was just getting boring of seeing elephants, zebras, giraffes, Dozens of hippos, hyenas, cheetahs, leopards, buffaloes, some rhinos, and even at one point, I remember, we had a whole pride of lions hanging around our car for more than an hour and without anyone else around. I was just lucky, but I, it was just me and my wife and an excellent, and I stressed it, excellent guide, and that we also stayed in wood lodges. We could even see zebras or buffaloes from our tents and lodge windows, which was really fun times. I think the Serengeti would still make Tanzania number one, but if you, on top of that, add that the Zanzibar is in the same country, it's just like icing on the cake. The beaches in Zanzibar, which is an island just off the coast of Tanzania, it's just incredible. The place is also a fantastic stop for a relax before or after the safari. That wraps up the top 10. When it comes to 
other places, other places I haven't been to where I think I would make the cut. So as I said, I have been to over 130 countries. I know what I like, I know what I don't like, I know what's there missing in a way. And only three places come to mind at the moment to say, okay, these ones will likely make it to the top 10 when we get there. The first one is Iran. I haven't been to Iran at all. It's the number one location I would like to visit for what, like five years or so now. It has been on the top of my list for a long time. Unfortunately, for multiple reasons, especially geopolitics and so on, I couldn't make it there yet. Once I do, I am all but certain that would end up somewhere in the top 10, if not the top 5. Yeah. The second and third locations are France and China. I have been both to France and to China multiple times, at least five times to each. But I, there's so much to see and the places are so big and so full of historical landmarks, areas and like so much diversity that I only got to experience, I would say 10%, 20% of each. And once I do, once I get to see more of France, more of China, I'm all but certain also that they will make it to the top 10 as a standalone places as well. Beyond that, you know, maybe the Galapagos, once I get there, it has also been on my bucket list for a while, full of animals, you know, likely to be showing up, if not the top 10, close to it as well. All right, that's all for this time. If you have enjoyed this video and if you have enjoyed this travel type of content, let me know in the comments so I know that I should be doing more or less of this in the future. Also, if you have any recommendations of where I should go next or other locations where you think I would like, I would love to hear that from you as well. With that, thanks for being here all the way to the end and looking forward to see you on the next video, which will be linked up here. Cheers.